Hi there, Simon from SimonWood.com. Ah, maybe this is the first for drinking outside the box. Today I have got uh, six wines from New York State. Maybe I've done one or two. I'm not even sure whether I've done that before, but I've never had six. And I've got six Rieslings, two from uh, North Fork, Long Island. I think they're both from North Fork, but Long Island. And four from the Finger Lakes. <coughs> Falling into the dry to medium to dry to medium end of uh, uh, of Riesling, and even the dry ones have got a little bit of sugar in there. But uh, I think the idea is because they've got quite a bit of, uh, of fresh grippy acidity. Uh, you won't, you don't notice the sweetness so much, or do you? Let's just dig in and find out. Uh, I've done them in vintage order and then within vintage by alcohol. So first one I've got is Palmanock uh, from North Fork and it's 2010 Riesling, weighing in at 11% alcohol. Clean, sappy, limey style. Um, got a whiff of, um, of uh, soft oxide. I've just only just pulled the uh, uh, pulled the tin lid off. Uh, so, but I think that that's going to dissipate with time. Feels like it's going to be a quite fine boned a little wine underneath. Not huge complexity, uh, but smells like it's going to be light, light refreshing, and uh, uh, some of that grippiness that makes you think, "Oh, I would like a bit of seafood." And then, when you come to try it, there's this like someone's as if someone's put a dusting of icing sugar on there. Not that it comes across as sweet, but it's just adding that little dustiness. So, yeah, dusty icing sugar. I can't think of another way of putting it. Reminds me of um, of some New Zealand styles. If I have a problem with it, I'd almost like it to be more on that uh, uh, drier style. I, I'm not, uh, some of the some of these they actually say on the back uh, how much residual sugars in here. I would have been tempted to do the fermentation a little bit further, get a little bit more uh, acidic grip in there, and uh, yeah, because it's got it's got enough roundness and sweetness of fruit in there. Uh, it's, it's a bit of uh, maybe a bit of very ripe apple, but uh, it's the ripe citrus that's the main fruity event. Yeah. Good, but um, not great, but tasty. Next one, um, and this I think this is one of the pioneers of um, the Finger Lakes, Herman J. Weimer, um, Riesling Reserve Dry from the Finger Lakes, established in 1979. So first one was 11% alcohol, this one weighs in at 12.8%, so uh, quite a, certainly a taller bottle, so it must be better, but uh, let's see whether it's a, uh, a taller, broader shouldered wine well, the first one was New Zealand in, in model, uh, this feels more on that um, maybe uh, Rheinga Alsace style. Feels like it's got quite a bit of weight behind it, a bit of peachiness to, to the citrus fruit here, but also this uh, little bit of minerality coming through. Uh, smells like it's going to be a more concentrated, fuller bodied wine, but um, maybe a little bit drier. We'll see. You get the zest, the... Um, the rounded apple and uh, uh, peach and uh, maybe even a little bit of pear in there and something uh, slightly more exotic, maybe some guava. Um, and then this mineral note comes through. As with the first one, I think that uh, maybe there's a case to be made for making it even that little bit drier. But uh, I know that some palates don't like drink. I, I, I quite like Riesling where you can almost feel your buttocks clench a bit. Uh, this one that there is some fresh grippiness, but I'd almost like a little bit more, but um, certainly a step up on, on the Pomenot. And I like that stretch, I like that mineral edge, it feels like feels like there's more of that wine still to come out. I mean, I've only just opened it, I wouldn't be surprised in an hour or so, it's singing a little bit even more sweetly. Um, okay, on to 2009 vintage now with uh, the Grapes of Roth, R-O-T-H, uh, apparently the producer is called Roman Roth. And um, so this is, uh, we're back in Long Island here, and uh, 2009, 11% alcohol. Let's give it a whirl. It's quite a candid, as in not candid camera, uh, candid peel, um, candid orange zestiness. Um, there's this broad, uh, almost a toasty character there, maybe a bit of raisins in there, and uh, lemon jelly. Um, I'm just wondering whether there's a, a little bit of fruit that's gone on to the, uh, what they call the surmaturité, some late harvest fruit in there, adding roundness and plumpness. Um, it feels like it's going to be a sweeter style, uh, but um, let's have a see. Actually, it's got what I call the sweet and sour tension. So I think it is a little bit sweeter than um, maybe the Pomenot, but it's richer with it. And um, it feels like it feels like there's there there more weight in the fruit in the first place, uh, but it feels like it's still got quite a lot of acidity to keep it tense. 
Um, what am I saying? I get bits of rhubarb. Um, I get this uh, juiciness. Um, it, there's, there's a floral blossom type character in there. Uh, I was a bit worried when I smelled that lemon jelly because uh, that, that makes me think often that the wines are going to be a bit simple. But it's not a simple style. Um, it, yes, it's, it, it does feel like it's got this richness tempered by this backbone of a spine of acidity and minerality. Uh, classy wine, probably my favourite so far. I don't know whether how much of a difference there was in vintages between these two, so, or, so whether it's the vintage talking or the winemaker, but um, whatever it is that's talking, it's saying it rather sweetly. Yeah, I like that. It's got a bracing character about the finish that was um, absent in the first two. Maybe not absent in the, in the second one, but um, uh, so th this one this one just seems to have that little bit more liveliness and um, vivacity. I like vivacious wines. Let's see whether the next three are vivacious. Uh, first of the, well, one number four, T.S. Uh, Dry Riesling from the Finger Lakes and uh, 2009 vintage. Um, let's give this one a whirl. Rather nice label. Again, I've just pulled the, uh, the screw cap off, so I'm getting this big waft of sulphur dioxide. Um, uh, but then behind there, uh, it feels like it's, um, it, it seems to almost seems to be dampening the, the, the wine down, and that's the idea of putting it in in the first place, not so the wine doesn't, um, doesn't develop too quickly. Um, if I have a problem with it, it could do with almost like being a little bit uh, lower in level of uh, sulphur dioxide, letting the fruit jump out of the glass more. So I'm going to keep swirling and see what I get, um, but as I say at the moment, it just feels um, slightly dumbed down. And then it starts to emerge. So you're getting the, um, it's, all, it's more one of those, um, it, and it, it looks maybe it's the vintage here, um, that uh, the, the, this feels rounder, um, and whereas the, maybe the 2010s had more of the citrus, this one feels more rounded peach plum type of character, uh, but with a bit of bracing character behind it as well. So, um, Yes, I'm, it, it's it's getting it's smelling better by by the minute. So um, I'm gonna I'm gonna have a swig of it and uh, see how I get on. Just been having a look on the back label. And it says lean and focused. Well, I wouldn't disagree with the leanness. It is the, 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 it is quite um, quite sleek. If anything, I could uh, I, I would could do with almost a little bit more flesh on the bones here. Um, it's uh, they, they, it's it's certainly balanced, but um, in terms of overall presence as a wine, it's neither complex. Uh, nor full and fleshy. Um, so perfectly pleasant, uh, nice, easy drinking style. Uh, good dry finish. It's not. It's not one of those that's trying to um, uh, overwhelm me with the, with the, with sugary sweetness. But um, but in terms of yeah, overall overall wine character, I would just like a little bit. Yeah, a little few more, uh, a few more grace notes, a few more, a few more layers. It's a it's a honest, simple, juicy, tasty wine, but um, not the extra mile. Nicely structured. I think it's going to go on for a little bit, three or four years at, at least. I'd have said, but um, and I think you're, you're, it's going to change rather than uh, improve massively. Very willing to be proved wrong, but um, that's how I feel at the moment. Wine number five uh, is a Red Newt Cellars Riesling uh, and Sawmill Creek Vineyards Finger Lakes 2009. So that first uh, of, of these last three Finger Lakes ones was uh, uh, blah blah 12.2% alcohol. This one is 12.6% alcohol, uh, but same vintage 2009. Back to that slightly, um, I was talking about a dusting of icing sugar, that, uh, um, if you imagine having Dolly mixture, that, uh, that slightly gritty, uh, gritty white sugary coating that you get on there. Uh, candy. Um, it smells okay. Uh, there's a reasonable bit of citrus grit behind, but um, feels on the simple side. I don't know whether they get botrytis in this part of the world, but there's something like a, a um, ever so slightly apricotty, peachy richness there. Uh, it may just be uh, a little bit of later harvested fruit rather than something that's gone gone on the botrytis. But um, it, it, a lot of these remind me of Australian Rieslings of the 1980s. Uh, there was uh, there was one called Hungerford Hill, like Coonawarra Riesling. Don't see too much Coonawarra Riesling around now. Um, uh, before they went slightly anal retentive, which was one of the problems of the 90s and early noughties. Um, feels like there's a tighter, more precise wine to be made from this fruit. As if a little bit of sorting would uh, uh, would be a, a, a good idea. Uh, so I like the flavours. I like their honesty. I like their roundness and richness. But I would like a little bit more precision in the wine. Good, but um, not quite there for me. 
final one uh, and the oldest one 2008 from Red Newt Cellars again we're Finger Lakes here and uh, alcohol wise this is 11.7 percent um, starting to show a bit of age here um, it feels like it's lost its um, its immediate fruit freshness of youth and uh, uh, the fruit's just going a little bit bruised and raisiny. So if you get it, if, if there's the apple edge, but it's more the baked apples. There's a bit of the citrus, but it's gone into that uh, slightly orange liqueur type of, uh, of character. Let's taste it. Well, it is showing a little bit of its age, um, and it's almost between two stools. Um, it feels like it's lost the freshness of youth hasn't quite got the uh, the honeyed uh, richness of maturity. I don't know whether it's ever going to uh, be in extremely classy. It reminds me of, I suppose, medium to low grade Alsace Riesling uh, that's got a few years in bottle. Uh, but you think, OK, maybe I, I should have got it when it was at, at its youngest and perkiest. I do like my Riesling on the perky side, although having said that, I had a 2005 Hugel Jubilee Riesling last night, which was um, yeah three years older than these. And than, than that one and uh, still uh, brimming with life and it had the mineral character and uh, it had the, the, the weight, it had the uh, touch of sweetness uh, but lovely balance with the acidity. If there's, um, I, I mean I, it, it's a very decent wine, I'm very, I'd, I'd, I'd certainly have a, a, at least a second glass of that. But uh, I mean, what from, what marks out the best ones for me? I mean, I, I think that uh, uh, the, the sorry the the, the the grapes of Roth and the, and the, and the Weimar they're they're probably my two favourites of, of of this lot. They um, they have um, they have that that weight. They have the crispness. Um, they have the structure and uh, they have the balance and uh, yes there's this perkiness there's this uh, uh, not just uh, not just a roundness and uh, gentleness and softness uh, you get the feeling of what I call life beyond fruit so um, but I mean as, as a range of six wines uh, if, if people say as people like say do, do they make wine in England it's, do they make wine in New York yes they do it's um, it's pretty good uh, and um, I will be certainly uh, I think probably trying to find some uh, uh, some slightly uh, South East Asian recipes with which I can uh, polish off a maybe at least a bottle of these tonight not just by myself of course but um, I'll uh, I'll look forward to doing it see you soon